The world is full of unexpected discoveries and bold, extraordinary ideas. Science has come far in the past two centuries alone, bringing with it a brand new batch of ethical concerns and debates. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three recent scientific breakthroughs and discoveries. Scientists discover Zealandia you would think it unlikely that there would be a hidden continent. But it just so happens that is exactly what scientists exploring the South Pacific have uncovered. In the 1990s, a team of 32 scientists from over 12 different countries found Zealandia in all its glory. Zealandia lies beneath the surface of the murky seas, thought to have been submerged over 80 million years ago. This secret continent is partially raised up on the ocean bed and appears to be roughly two-thirds the size and length of Australia, or about the size of India. Zealandia is located midway between New Caledonia and New Zealand, from which it gets its name. Several scientists have come out since its initial discovery with the argument that it ought to be officially recognized as one of Earth's continents. A more recent examination done by the team of scientists who discovered it in the first place back in the 1990s reveals that the continent was on the ocean's surface more recently than originally thought. The IODP, short for International Ocean Discovery Program, and the A&M University of Texas teamed up in their investigations of the submerged continent and found that its land levels made it possible for plant life and animals to cross between continents. Formerly, it was believed that Zealandia sunk incredibly deep and that was why it took us so long to find out about its very existence. However, new evidence attests it is not as lowly immersed as we believed. Though it is still at least over a kilometer or two-thirds of a mile below surface level, making it extremely challenging to investigate properly, and thus surveys of it have been scarce. As recently as 2017, researchers managed to go on an expedition with sufficient equipment, drilling into Zealandia's seabed at six different sites. The water depths drilled more than 1,250 meters, or 4,000 feet deep. The expedition was fruitful, with 8,000 feet worth of sediment getting collected for analysis. These samples, when analyzed, can reveal a plethora of valuable information, volcanism, climate, when the region had its time above the surface, how the land changed through the millennia, countless wonderful results could be found out. Gerald Dickens, the co-chief scientist at the Texan Rice University in Houston, explained that alongside sediment samples, they found many fossils. He commented upon the matter. More than 8,000 specimens were studied, and several hundred fossil species were identified. Once the analyses returned from the sediments and fossil samples, it was revealed that the environment of Zealandia was shockingly unconventional to what researchers expected. The spores and pollen taken from land plants and shells of various shallow sea organisms showed that the Ring of Fire, a circular formation in the Pacific Ocean where volcanic eruptions and earthquakes are a constant threat, had much to do with the continent's doomed sinkage. The Ring of Fire, over millions of years, caused drastic changes in the ocean's depth, which led to it overwhelming the poor continent and eventually consuming it. Rupert Sutherland, an expedition scientist at Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand, has stated that those working on the project believe Zealandia sank beneath the waves after its separation from both Australia and Antarctica back when the continents were still forming. This grand discovery can help give us much-needed insight into what life was like in the South Pacific millions of years ago, particularly how plants and animals evolved and furthermore can assist us in understanding the way our tectonic plates move. Perhaps scientists may even be able to use Zealandia to produce accurate simulations of how the Earth's climate changes through the coming years. Researchers have grown human embryos from skin cells. Science is advancing at an exceptional rate. By reprogramming human cells found on our skin, biologists have managed to grow model versions of human embryos. 
This scientific breakthrough allows us the potential to learn more about developmental disorders, how to cure genetic illnesses, and maybe even could lead to solving infertility, specifically in the case of improving IVF treatments. Nature Today published a study that found that when you treat skin cells in a certain manner, they begin to transform into embryo-like structures. Jun Wu, the leader of a US-Chinese scientific research group, reported such findings in his own studies, referring to early forming embryonic structures named blastocysts. Once again, as with each scientific breakthrough that occurs, we must ask ourselves whether the way forward is or is not moral. Is it morally correct for us to play with life? As it would give us the power to have live models of human embryonic development? Or is it wrong, unjust and horrific? In the last five decades, we've found out an immense amount of information regarding how organs work, primarily due to the progress in stem cell research wherein scientists could produce human organs from human tissue outside the body. It is these organoids, miniature faux organs grown with the usage of our tissue, that let us know what happens to victims of the Zika infection and has granted us infinite medical knowledge that is priceless. It is also due to these studies that we have our current advanced ways of dealing with cancer, which we would not have without the arguably morally grey investigations. Whilst these skin cell embryos could show us how embryos form, and the very basic, early developments that occur during the first stages of pregnancy, they cannot give us insight into the complex specifics of what happens in the womb. After all, the lining of the uterus is required to establish a long-term pregnancy, but these models might still provide us with the answers we seek. An important thing to keep in mind is that these model embryos are not actual human embryos in the traditional sense. Whether they could be turned into actual embryos is uncertain, but considered unlikely. Regardless of the fact these are not real embryos with the potential to grow into babies, many countries have strict laws when it comes to embryonic research. A Bill Gates Venture aims to spray dust into the atmosphere to block the sun. Bill Gates, one of the most famous billionaires in the world, has been financially supporting the research of sun-dimming technology, which may theoretically reflect the sunlight trapped in the Earth's atmosphere back out to the cosmos, which would create a much-needed global cooling effect, helping us with the struggle of continuous global warming. The SCOPEX, or Stratospheric Controlled Perturbation Experiment, was launched by scientists from Harvard University, who pondered on a way to assist our global struggle finally coming up with a calcium carbonate dust spray, which is notably non-toxic, and plan on spraying it into the air. Despite the great things this could bring, this has been an area of much controversy. Solar geoengineering is believed to be a science unworthy of pursuit, with many claiming it has many unforeseen hazards and could worsen the situation by creating a drastic shift in weather patterns that would only form more issues. Environmentalists also fear that using this as a quick fix will encourage unethical consumption of fossil fuels which got us in this situation in the first place. Currently, the project is set to take an experimental step in June when they will travel to Kiruna in Sweden with the permission of the Swedish Space Corporation where they are going to launch a balloon carrying their experiment up 12 miles high. It will not spray any of the calcium carbonate this time around. It is going to be a scope to see whether the balloon is maneuverable and works well. The next step may be releasing actual sprays into the atmosphere to test whether the theory is correct and if it will indeed help us deal with global warming. No one truly knows what effect this spray or geoengineering experiments will have long term on our planet. Only after it is released into the atmosphere will we be able to observe its effects. Not to mention, there is much uncertainty regarding how much CaCO3 will be required to cool the greenhouse effect. There is a fear we may release too much, and it could become a catastrophe. Freezing temperatures can cause atrocious famines and make ordinary survival difficult if we are not careful with how much CaCO3 is sent into the atmosphere. It could also cause more future refugee crises, with people all over the globe seeking shelter in countries with more stable temperatures. 
David Keith, a scientist, has suggested the formation of a risk pool to be used to aid smaller countries as compensation for any harm that may befall them from such experiments, but some consider it to be a cruel idea as money cannot replace lands lost as collateral damage, should the land become inhabitable. Future plans for global geoengineering have been stopped in 2019 by various countries during a meeting of the United Nations, namely America, Brazil and Saudi Arabia. In order for any proper progress to occur, there will need to be a global agreement, but considering all the risks, it seems the better alternative is for a bigger push towards renewable energy sources so that the usage of fossil fuels will stop. The world is full of revelations and transcendent discoveries, but no great discovery is made without the threat of sacrificing our morality, our very humanity, for the sake of technology. But what do you make of these three discoveries, and should we go through with any of these experiments mentioned? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.